Hello everyone, welcome back. Just uh, another quick live stream. As, uh, as promised, just trying to do one a night here. Um, see how things go. Just in the background here, just sad spent rendering. First coat, it's a scratch coat. And that video can be found obviously on the, the main page on the main channel um, actually quite a lot in the description videos that may be helpful to people learning quite a, a strong mix 3 to 1 ASBR waterproofer and a little bit of motor mix And very warm in the background. Um, still getting cold, cold mornings and decent weather um, at the minute, so can't complain as it's staying dry on the most. up guys I know in the, one of the previous live streams we were talking about the, the scratcher it's been used to scar fire a lot of people prefer the, the Rambo tools one the, the white one but I prefer this I think it gives a better key, better bait. So that's why I, I always sort of up for this one. It's closer together, teeth and it's closer together, so just a bit more a bit more grip for your second coat. Um we're talking about the the fact that I go straight as well and don't zigzag um, up and down. With this one, you can't really go up and down because it sort of, if you go up and down, it just sort of scrapes a lot of the render away and cuts into it a lot. So it's not great for the zigzag sort of thing. Um, you guys were talking about the zigzag stronger. Um, that's you know less likely to crack due to hydration but it's really due to your breaking the joint of the motor joints in behind um, but also you can create a fish mouth that can then trap water and any trap water could freeze and blow off your top coat um, or both coats even so we don't really want water in behind your render at all ever but yeah, I may, may try and do a few more videos on just the hawk and trail you can see I'm doing a wee bit here in the background showing how I lift it might do a few more on that sort of with skim and stuff with the board with the bucket um, do things like that simple things like the scrim tape um, it's not rusty um, just sort of sim simpler things um, beads, re reveals I know the Doyle brothers wanted to do some on reveals and stuff um, I have a couple of good sort of tactics on the way I straighten up the skim on reveals and sat and cement and stuff which would be good good videos I'm 
treasures I'm actually wearing here. Um, have the the built in knee pads, so they're pretty good for when you're you need to kneel down and stuff. Um, not sure if you can see them here or not. So see if the camera lowers down just to see. I also have a pair of stickers ones as well. That I got that um, I actually keep them for the screen. They're a wee bit thicker material. But I can put the knee pads in them. What, what I normally do is I wear them trousers, throw another pair of trousers over them and then put other knee pads on as well. So I kind of have two pairs of knee pads. Um, which seems to save my knees. When I was a bit younger, I got like a bit of an infection in my knee from Screed. This is it sort of came up like a big sort of pimple. And once the pus came out of that, there it was a lot. The pain went away straight away, like. But I think it was due to the sand and cement burn that I got in my knees. As I turned up the job, I didn't realise we were supposed to be screening. The guy I was helping the job with told me we were just floating walls and. That was it, but it turned out we were floating walls and screen and he was skimming already. So we were kind of doing everything that, that day. Um, and of course I just had a pair of jeans on me and the moisture came through and burnt my knees with the, with the cement. Um, could have been lame or anything in it. Um, uh, taking a break. Is this latex? The tax job. Actually, Look how well that stuff's mixed. It's definitely, if you are doing it, you don't want your, your mortar too wet, but you don't want it too stiff either. Definitely somewhere in between. Everybody's going to want their sand cement slightly different. Uh, um, so, uh, I would say it's it's probably about five mil. Probably about five mil upwards the eight mil the scratch coat. Not, I do try and keep the scratch coat as thin as I can um, and then obviously my top coat's a little bit thicker. I tend to notice on bigger jobs anyway, if it takes me a ton to scratch it, um, it can take me a wee tiny bit more sand but the, the cement always seems to balance out pretty even because my top coat I do a little bit thicker um, than my bottom coat so I've noticed that the cement sort of balances out that way because obviously your top coats you put more on but you're putting less cement in the mix if that makes sense James I don't know it might help you out on sort of if you're going to pick sand um, pick up bags of sand even But basically, with my scratch coat, I'm trying to scratch it all. Obviously, you don't want to go so thin that you can see all the grains of sand. Um, if you're seeing grains of sand so much, the bee pips, you, you go a bit thicker. I remember that big hole filling that out it was interesting. And plenty of sand cement to take, take that one out. What's up, Gordon Mackey, buddy? Uh, it's not ba bad evening here. It's pretty nice. It's not cold. It was cold this morning, but it's been pretty pretty nice all day. What what job are you doing now, Rusty?
Um, but definitely have a lot, a lot of projects coming up after I get this one out of the way. Not this job particular, but big contract. What are you guys working on, James and Gordon? What what projects are you use at? What homers, what jobs are you doing at the minute? I had somebody that wouldn't have been so far away from me he showed me his he did a wee video on his pump spraying on carrion. Oh bathrooms. The worst thing sometimes about the bathrooms is that they're small. And then the second things can be that they might have stable seals and also tear the diesel everywhere and a lot of times I think kits and bathrooms cost a lot of money to get done but sometimes when you go into a bathroom and you realise what other people have done in previous it just sort of shocks you just the, the, the batch up jobs just sort of patching on patching and tearing over tiles and tracks and pipes have been moved from here to there oh, ugly ugly sort of work Joey's been niggled at for pipes to go through then drill holes all sorts of things just an on street how far on have you got on the on street on street Yeah, I've done some horrific looking bathrooms. On suits. I thought we were scalding out. I know me and a man, the, the bathroom he was doing there, and he was he was getting paid to go in and bought and skim the walls. And the guy sort of told him it was all ready. Pardon me, told him it was all ready to go, and he turned up with the stuff. They find that it had already been halfway tail and the floor was tail. So I think his price had to change because you know, he priced it originally as an empty room, not with like all brand new stuff in it. And if anybody here's ever plastered around brand new sinks and baths and tails, it's an absolute nightmare. I remember um did a job and I think I was younger at the time, my dad had actually dropped me to it. And a mate of mine got me the job. We were both in tech together, and he couldn't, wouldn't, shouldn't have done the job. I don't know, pick one of them. But anyway, I ended up getting the job, and it was two. And one was a bathroom, and one was a, an ensuite in it. And basically, I had the plasterboard part of the ensuite for the tailor the tail, the back wall um, and then I had the bought and skim out well, I should have been bought and skimming out the walls but the guy never left me any bonding and he left me like three bags of skim which I needed another bag and he didn't have any PVA so it was like um, I had the obviously get PVA as well there. There was no beads, needed beads and obviously there was no bonding and the price wasn't moving up much for the materials so I had the app to scrape all the tail adhesive off. I found that some of it when it was wet softened up but trying to keep a brand new bath, sink, toilet, shower, tray, 
and another sink and tiles clean while you're doing all that was a nightmare but obviously you know things like that can be brushed up easy enough but then you then have to go and plaster the walls and the walls were halfway tiled up uh, it was definitely an absolute pain of a job Ah, that literally sounds like Gordon, you were in the same situation as me and my mate. Oh. Tyler seem very busy at the minute. They don't seem to be that they can move their dates to suit anybody. They either come or they don't. But we're talking a lot about tanning here, you know. <laughs> tanning, I think years ago, tanning and plastering practically has was the same job. I don't think it's that far away from each other. Um, I think they're very related. It's a lot of the same thing. There's obviously a lot of things you need to know about tanning that you wouldn't know if you just do plastering, but. Definitely very closely related jobs. Brick at the bottom was sealed by the SPR. What do you mean sealed? What way do you mean sealed? But yes, there is. There's SBR in the, the block as well. The SBR is not really to do with sealing things always, it's to do with bonding as well. The B may be starting for bond. So it will help it bond, it will help it adhere, help it stick. Instead of scudding it. If I wasn't going to use the SBR in the mix, I would have scudded that whole wall. But again, that would have added on time to the job as well. That's what I added on money. And obviously, everybody's working to a budget. Um, but, uh, if that's what you mean, sealed. Um, but a lot of brick does actually have quite high suction. That bottom, like you said, sealed. It, it didn't actually soak in much. Du, 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 du.
sort of a wee thing about SBR there. But basically it is a, like a tanking kit that will help stop water penetrating your, your motor mix. So obviously you don't really need waterproofers if you're using it. But a wee splash of waterproofer as well won't do you any harm. But obviously in the back of all SBR, anything you pour into your mix, it reads do a test panel, which would be, you know, maybe mix up a wee bucket, a wee scoop, couple of scoop falls, test it on a wee part of the house. Like, say you're going to do a big house, you could do a wee test panel, a couple of coats, and go out and whack it with a hammer, you know, test it, go out and whack the thing with a hammer, see how strong it becomes, throw water on it, see if it absorbs the water. You know, you're happy, you're happy, you maybe did do three B test panels somewhere, don't need to be massive. Um, do them even down low where the ground's gonna come up and cover it. But but like here, this ground's actually gonna cover this wall even more so when the guy levels it all out. Um, so you could do it down underneath where the soil's gonna skip back um, and pick, you know, you can even write on it, three to one mix, four to one mix, five to one mix, um, and you can pick your, your mix from that, write SBR on it, you know, if it's something small, or make a list in a book, plan your job out, plan out what, what, what way you're going about it. Um, if it seems to be sucking in water, then you might need a bit more waterproofer. Um, if it's repelling the water, then you know you're good there, but if it all started to crack, you may want to adjust something, a bit less cement, um, better sand, plastering sand over building sand I would recommend, clean plastering sand, so just a wee bit of food for thought on on that sort of, sort of additives to your mix of what you know what I recommend to do because all these additives cover themselves and say you know test it before use that that's the only way you really can test it before use um, so that's what I would suggest if, if you had a bigger job on how you go about it Who loves doing me jobs like this? Walking around new, new wooden timber and new tiled up floor here. See, you'll find a lot of people prefer the plaster to come in after so you can work down tight everything and have it all sort of cleaned up after and ready for paint. Another crazy job, sound cement, sound cement floor, skim it, nice curve. Definitely do like the Plazzy Flex on curves and rounds.
call it different, some plaster mix anyway, I guess. Um, We look at some tailing of actually done. Uh, in the past, plaster or tailor? What? I actually, plastered this room too. Think I did. I think I plastered the ceiling. Maybe not. Can't remember. Definitely did a lot of work around the shower, plasterboard and plastering it, tanking, which pretty much says the SBR, but it's like a, a tanking kit we got for this, and it was, we painted it, we had to paint it left to right and then up and down, um, but each time you did a coat, you had to wait 24 hours before you did another coat. Quite nice tail now, actually. Oh, I think so. Anyway. So, hope everyone's having a good relaxing Friday. And who else work on tomorrow? Um, work on tomorrow. Is anybody else in for the, the greedy Saturday? Who else greedy working on Saturdays?
fibers. I have a lot of these at the moment. Got a pen in here. Strength up a mix. I have a job in mind for more of these types of fiber. I know people were saying that you should not add it to, you should add it to the water, but you don't add the fibers to the water, you add them to the mix. Um, even say so on the packet. But there is a reason for it, and I might show, I might literally waste a packet just to show why you don't put them in the water. Um, but it may be obvious to some people why you don't put the fibers in the water, but obviously people think you always put the additives in the water. Um, but you don't, you don't always put, that's why you should always read the back of the bottles, you don't always put them into the water. Some things you put to the mix, and the mix do better to the mix than do the water. Um, waterproofer, and most waterproofers, SPRs and all can go in with the water. Um, salt inhibitors, you, they go to a ready mix. If you put them in water, they just kind of like crystallize. you got to put them in the mix. Um, fibers, I'll tell you why. Why do you not add them fibers to the water? Um, the reason is most of them will float and they'll stick to the edges. So they won't mix through, they'll just all stick. Um, where they'll mix through the mix. As you can see. If you're not getting too dizzy. But they will mix through the mix, lovely. And they will also strengthen that wall a hell of a lot more than just ordinary render. So this video I need to remake. If I can get it, I don't know why it's doing this to me. Why is it going so big? But I gotta remake this video. Apologies guys, not really know why it's doing this. It's not really big, I zoomed in on it. Quite a lot of sorry about all the funny moving about. Getting quite a lot of people want to see this video remade, and all the files. I think it deleted most of the files, and um, so even when I open this video, it doesn't have all the files for some reason. Um, so I'm going to remake this. I'll probably like basically the way I am now and I'll talk over everything I'm saying, what I'm doing. I'll remake it. But and the reason I'll remake it is what I'm saying in the original video. Everything's right and cracked, but there's a bit of music playing and you can't hear me over the music. So it's it's not good that way, like. So a lot of people want it remade, and it will be so once I get time. Probably after the town job I have coming up. Again, many patch jobs is people 
you know, they, they don't maybe have a lot of money, they just replast the whole place and they're trying to save some money to put elsewhere in the house, maybe the flooring or the decorating and stuff. So they do at the patch and obviously if you have no work and they want you to patch, you're gonna patch. You know, always you know, you, you gotta feed the people, you know, you gotta feed the family. Um so you're gonna sort of you know go ahead and work on but obviously some patches in particular here may have been a bit easier to to replast the whole thing. But obviously then I wouldn't be able to say how to patch. I would have to say how to replaster a whole wall. So we'll take away from that video. Um, and of course also you know if you're pasting it a certain way just to patch, you don't have the the money to spend on extra materials to just go ahead and reskim it. And obviously if you place it for a certain time you may not have that time to, to do the extra work as well. But I tend to think I can swipe in things pretty well for passes. Um, it normally, James, but I normally go with a 16 inch trial, so I do. But 14s are good as well. 14 to 16 would be the the main sizes I would pick. Um, but obviously, you, I'm not sure if you've seen it, the midget trial that I made, I actually use that quite a lot on jobs, especially re skims. Um, ones with archives, and obviously not pe people don't always want their archives ripped off. So again, like I said, you may have to work around in things or bits, round sockets and all that are for a bit of a tighter area. So I actually use it and it's probably only, should maybe only be four, five inches. It's literally almost as long as it is broad. It's a wee bit longer than it is broad, but I have put my hand that many sort of occasions. I think the child actually used to hear the Tizak. What size of child are you using at the minute, James, buddy? What about you, Mackie? What do you go for? Thirteen inch, yeah. Good and good. Thirteen's good and Marshall Town's good. 
That's some room with AMT. Uh, I have heard people saying bad batches and stuff as well, so I think you can get. I think that can happen with all trials, with all makes. You probably get a bad batch. I know for sure that there's some sites that, not so much sites, but you know, some sellers on some sites that aren't selling the real deal. Um, you may think it's a Marshall Town or Tyzak or an Ox or Rafina, but it may just look like one. I know that sounds crazy, but it had to be at the bottom one and it just rusted and it said stainless steel on it, so that tells you all you need to know. Stainless steel will not rust unless you somehow dip in some chemical that's going to take the coating off it or whatever. Yeah, so you get her all lashed on with the 13 and then use the Rafina Spot for flattening. Yeah, Rafina Spot's nice. Actually, last time I used it was for a head. I was trying to straighten the head up. Um, I have the handle, but it doesn't seem the the pole. I haven't seemed to have got it, anything that can actually attach to it. I think you need to buy like a painter's pole to attach to the handle of the Rafina. Um, or have a, like a thinner pole that would squeeze up into it. Just sort of use it as a handle. Myself, anyway. As you can see, there's a lot of work in patching as well. There's filling and a lot of trial, a lot of trying to clean down the joint. I'm sure all the plasters in here will know that there and anyone's watching. Again, if you are watching later on and you've made it this far, um, you know you can drop in comments in the live stream. You can watch all the live stream comments, but you can also comment in the live stream later on. Um, it will become a video. I'll also add it to a playlist of live streams. Um, seem to be getting a good lot of sort of regular guys in here, um, girls, whatever, um, regular sort of supporters on the live streams. So, but you can suggest things, guys. Um, definitely open the suggestions. How to make the live streams better? Um, but just want to hear in the live streams. I just want to talk about it's really up, up to you guys like I just like getting them talking about tools and work <laughs> don't talk about work too much all the time like people don't like talking about work when they're not in work even when they're in work they don't like talking about work when they're in work either some people just don't like talking about work But um, yeah, guys, yeah, gonna wrap it up there anyway. Um, appreciate all the support again, and um, it's all well brilliant. And I'll try and get another live stream tomorrow. Hopefully a bit earlier. I'll be home from work earlier. Um, Saturday's not not the hardest day to get through. It's not a twelve hour shift, so hopefully I'll get home that bit earlier and. Maybe have time to do a live stream a bit earlier, or, or get something more prepped, or you know, might might literally do this video again and re-upload it. <laughs> yeah, I'll do, buddy. I'm, I'm one of them greedy people who works Saturdays, so you know, six day weeks on this contract, I'll do. Um, sort of have to do it. Has to be done. In fact, it actually can be seven day weeks as well. Tomorrow will be my. Um, yeah, I'm just going to say the contracts aren't 
I'm always going to say they're not quite as physical as what I'm doing here, but this one's been quite full on. Um, my hands have been going pretty quick. Um, actually, on this, I haven't really talked about this a lot, um, but from this contract, I've actually got four, uh, not fork lift license, um, scissor lift license, um, chai picker license. Um, and it's, you know, it's, and also like a, a harness sort of to do with harnesses as well, and you can put harnesses on. Um, but yeah, you do, do need time to recover, definitely. But um, hopefully, next week's not going to be 12 hour shifts, it's going to be, I think it's just going to be 8 hour shifts, which will feel like a half day. Definitely will, will feel nice. Then I can maybe do work after work. Yeah, white right, dash. Right, James. Um, yeah, James, but I'll try and get that one. I'm not sure if you were in the, the last live stream or the one before that, I can't remember. And I played the wet dash video. And I'm gonna, I'll chop it up and sort of, I'll just talk through what what I'm doing and what goes through my mind when I'm doing it. And um, might give you some help and encouragement when you're working. Um, I'll sort of do a bit of a voiceover of it and explain the way I'm going about it. Um, saying that uh, it's not a full wall, but in my opinion, I would say a full wall wet dashing is an easier job than patching it, so this way I'm hoping to give the best of both worlds. Um, but what I might do is I might do the patch job and then I have another one where I do like a garden wall. So I might throw that into the video as well and I'll try and talk about that. Um, I'll try, I have a couple of videos I need to get cracked on with, so hopefully I can get a bit of time over the weekend and do that. Um, see how we get on. But yeah, it's definitely up and coming, James. So it's on the list, buddy. I appreciate what you want, and we'll get it sorted. So make sure and thumbs it up when it comes out. <laughs> I'm actually uploading at the minute. I'm creating a video right now as we speak. Um, just a wee skimming video that's being created with the Superflex 3 and cheers buddy um, got a wee Superflex 3 video hopefully coming up I have to, it's weird I have to kind of for every video I make I actually technically have to make it twice just the way I don't know why the programs I'm using maybe I'm doing it all wrong but I kind of have to like so first of all, when it's on my camera, I have to get it on the computer. Then I gotta get it find it. Sometimes I find it hard to find where I even put the thing. I'm not the best with computers, so it can take me hours trying to figure out where I put the file. Which is why, like, I have so many other wee jobs I've never uploaded. Like the, even this one's this one's around this or era of time that I did this job that I just can't find where I've put them. Um. It's actually halted me. I don't know if you all remember the utility room jobs, but if you go back and look at that, there's like three or four videos done on it, even on the outside of the roof and all. But I never get past the plasterboard stage because I've lost such a, such a section, or somehow I didn't record a section of the plasterboard, so I might have to skip the plasterboard or mix match it with something else. And then come back to the plaster and all that, that old sweet, that uh, utility room, sorry. I've got on sweet bed in my mind. I won't leave. I have a wee job of me on sweet to get done. Um, so that's to happen. Um, so there's, there's definitely a good few videos coming up in the pipeline here. All fresh content.
I still have that Spear and Jackson scoop. I actually have a Ragnar one now as well to pit it against. But Spear and Jackson scoop is still going strong. Um, but like I said, yeah. So back back to my story of how I make videos. Um, so after I find it, I have to like put it through a program and turn it into a different type of file and then put it through the final program that can add in intros and add in things um, and then I'll be able to upload it so it's quite a bit of time put into it um, but I appreciate the time you guys give watching it as well um, and time hit sharing it and hitting the like button I appreciate every bit of support I get to the full um, and on that note guys um, i definitely got to get to bed so thanks again for watching and hopefully you just get to catch the next live stream and keep an eye out for Sunday for, for another wee video I'm going to try and obviously always have a video every Sunday